It was an atrocious attack. It was horrible. You don't see things like that as bad as the news is around the world. You just don't see those images. We are very concerned when a thing like that can happen. This is about humanity. We're talking about humanity. And it can't be allowed to happen. What now? What now at the moment? Uh, President Trump considering and could announce his decision on Syria. This in response to a suspected gas attack that killed at least 40 men, women and children. U.N. Security Council preparing a resolution condemning the Assad regime again. Mr. Trump saying the world cannot stand by in the face of atrocity again. Illinois Republican Adam Kinzinger, Air National Guard, sits on the, the Foreign Affairs Committee. Sir, how are you and good morning? I'm good. I'm uh, good. Let, let's make it clear, this is not easy. No, this, this is not easy. Tomahawk cruise missiles at four o'clock in the morning. Um, if, if you believe Assad is responsible, what do you do about it to make sure he cannot do it again when you had an understanding three years ago that Russia was going to take care of all the chemical weapons in his arsenal and get rid of them? Uh, well, this reminds us, don't trust Russia. And all you have to do is look at Twitter and see the Russian bots that are out there saying that this was a U.S. false flag operation and that somehow there are people that actually believe that. Uh, interestingly, the reality is Bashar al-Assad Assad used chemical weapons. Whether Russia authorized them to do it or not, they are supporting Assad in this process. And it has been since World War I that we have held as an international community, and especially as the United States, that chemical weapons have no use on the battlefield. And so inflicting damage upon the regime that far exceeds the cost or any benefit they had of using chemical weapons is essential here. And it doesn't mean we intervene in a civil war. It it doesn't mean 200,000 troops in Syria, like President Obama used to say, was the only option. It means that the cost of the regime far exceeds any benefit they gain, and we make that clear. Lindsey Graham had this to say. I personally think he's an international war criminal. This is the third, third time around. I'd make him a target. Uh, if I were president of the United States, they would not be uh, one runway left in Syria to, to take off and drop a barrel bomb on any more kids, and Assad would sleep very poorly at night. Well, if do you agree with that, making Assad a target? Because oh. yeah, you have to think about if I mean the possibility that you take him out. What, what fills the vacuum of leadership in that country? If you're going to bomb for four or five days or a week, what, what happens when the dust settles? These are strong considerations sure. now. They are. Um, I would love to see Assad as a target. I don't think the administration necessarily will. I think they'll attack his air force, his infrastructure used to launch these, whether it's command and control, uh, helicopter facilities, air bases, et cetera. But let's keep in mind, everybody, you know, you hear a lot of times, and it's a good question, it's one we need to talk about, what comes after Assad? About three or however many years ago when the red line in Syria happened in 2013, uh, President Obama made that statement. He goes, well, we just don't know what happens after. It's kind of justification for his lack of action. The reality is we never could have predicted it got as bad as it did with Assad. Assad is creating chaos. Assad is chaos. So even if he dies by the hand of his own people or a U.S. missile strike, the place cannot get any more chaotic than it is now. So he's killing half a million people, 50,000 children. We need to make it clear that there is no room for that in the Internet. National community, and this is where the United States can be a world leader and should be. Um, the president said 24 to 48 hours. That that may be the case, but if you're going to draft the support of the French and the Brits, maybe Saudi Arabia and others, lead with a coalition. And if you're going to do that, it's going to take longer before you initiate a response. But is your view on that? When military experts are saying, if, if you're going to go, you got to take out his entire ability to carry or to fly. Um, the, the point is, again, all these questions come back to the complexity of the issue here when you've got Iranians on the ground and Russians on the ground in addition to Assad's people. Yeah, I agree. Look, it's a very complicated situation. I don't think the answer is necessarily that it has to be a full coalition of people. It'd be great. And I think pretty easily we could get them on board. I don't think that's going to be a time issue. But it means inflicting a greater... We, we destroyed basically a fifth of Assad's Air Force a year ago in 2017. So we made it clear, and he didn't use it for a year. He didn't use chemical weapons for a year. We made it clear... Um, that the cost is going to exceed the use of it. He, he did use chlorine gas, and now we're making it clear that that has no place in this world. And I think the president will make the right decision and inflict serious damage on Assad's yeah. regime. Important stuff. Sir, thank yeah. you. Come on back, all right? Adam Kinzinger, Anytime. live from the Hill. Thanks. See ya.